Okay, so we're going to install a domain controller onto a server, micro, uh, Windows Server 2012 uh, workstation. Um, the process is very similar if you're installing it on a Server 2008 or a 2008 R2 server as well. Um, so the purpose of a domain controller is to create essentially a domain for your network. Um, so it, it just a, a trust between all your computers uh, and they can communicate via the domain. So you can have uh, a, a, a tool called Active Directory, which we're going to go over as well. Uh, we can set up users, computers, etc. So you can use, for example, if I set up a user called Bob, I can log in to any one of the computers that are connected and bound to my domain with that same account. Okay. So to get started, we open up Server Manager and we go to Add Roles and Features. Okay. And next, we want to do a role based. So my server name and my IP address. Again, you probably would want to change your server name to something a bit more meaningful. Um, but the other thing you need to ensure is that your computer does have a IP address assigned to it before you configure a domain controller. Okay, so we're going to say that, leave that as default. We want to select Active Directory Domain Services. We want to add feature. Next. Leave that as default. It's also going to install group policy management, which is a really nifty feature that comes with your domain controller installation. It lets you set up policies and enforce them across your groups of computers and users, etc., and lock down certain services, etc., as well. And install. Okay, so that installation has finished. So click on close. Alright, so once the domain controller role is installed, uh, you'll need to go into ADDS and then you'll see that there's a notification there. All right. Now in um, server 2008, you need to run a command called dcpromo. Uh, that command no longer is required in server 2012. So if you're installing this on a 2008 machine, after the installation, run DC promo from a command prompt uh, or from just start run, uh, you will access the same feature as what you'll see on here. So in 2012, promote this server to a domain controller. Okay. <clears throat> add a domain controller to an existing domain, add a new domain or add a new, for add a new forest. Now, if this is a additional domain controller, um, then you add it to an existing domain or to an existing forest, depending on how you want to structure it. In our case, we want to add a new forest, right? So we want to define a brand new domain in a brand new forest, okay? Root domain name, let's call it mydomain.com. And next, Forest and domain functional levels. So this comes down to what other domain controllers, what other, uh, I guess, what other domain controllers do you want to have in your environment? Uh, this is something that you've got to plan for, um, I guess, now, if there's any potential future um, mergers, say if you're in a business form and you need to merge, for example, to another domain um, in another business and say, for example, create a trust or if you want to share services, etc. You want the domain functional level to be at a level where you can communicate with domains that are perhaps in a lower form. Uh, so we're installing this on a server 2012. Uh, there may be other companies that are running 2008 domain controllers. So if you set up your functional level as 2012, you're not going to be able to communicate with other domain controllers that are running 2008. Okay, so this is a, I guess, a step that you have to decide based on what your requirements will be. For us, let's just set it to 2008 for the forest and 2008 for the domain, okay? This server, we also want it to be a domain name system, so a DNS server as well, okay? So we want to tick that. 
and then you want to set up your password okay make sure that you set this password aside put it in a special place to not forget it because you may need it for recovery purposes we're going to leave that Okay, NetBIOS name, we'll leave it as a default. All right, so this is your configuration file. So your database, your log files, and your sys volumes as well. Um, good precautions is to put these in alternate locations. So if you've got other servers, external, uh, like an external NAS, external SAN storage, um, save these to an alternate location uh, because if your domain controller crashes you'll lose a lot of this uh, configuration and you won't be able to recover it so for the purpose of this exercise we're going to leave it in the default but i would recommend you save these in alternate locations okay so just give it a review make sure that you're happy with your configuration next Okay, so it may run uh, a. <clears throat> All right, so that prerequisites check will just scan your system. Um... All right, so those uh, prerequisites um, need to be validated before the service is installed. Uh, it may throw up a few errors, like for example, these errors, I wouldn't worry too much about them. Um, you really wanna worry if they have a big red exclamation mark. That's when you really should look into what has happened. But you can see that all prerequisites have checked and passed successfully. So we wanna say install. Okay, so that will start to install the domain controller and we'll see how we go. Okay, so this server is now going to restart because the installation is finished. All right, so that server has now restarted and the roles have been installed. You'll now see that you've got all the AD tools here as well. Uh, we won't go over that in this tutorial, but I do have another video going in detail uh, a bit more about what Active Directory users and computers can do. So, thank you.